Welcome to Game Fondy Reviews. In this video, we're going to take a look at Dominion. Dominion is essentially the father of modern deck building games. Let's jump right in with the description of the rules, see a few example turns being played, and I'll be back for some closing remarks. This is Dominion set up for a two player game. To set it up, you give each player seven copper and three estates, which they're going to shuffle together to form their starting deck. It's always those same ones, but uh, they're shuffled up and they don't get to look at them anymore. No matter how many players, you always lay out all the copper, silver, gold, and the trash marker. But for the uh, victory points, if there's only two players, you do eight of each. And if there's three or four players, you do 12 of each. Also, these curses over here are worth negative one victory points. And in a two-player game, there's 10 of them. In a three-player game, there's 20. And in a four-player game, there's 30. Then you lay out the 10 kingdom cards for the round. They're usually always different, and the way I normally do them is shuffle up the randomizers, which are exactly the same cards, just with a different back to pick the 10. But to make it easy, we use the recommended set for the first game. You can choose in any combination of how you'd like in the future, but it's really fun to mix and match the cards. There's 10 of each card, and they're going to form a stack face up so that everybody can see them, except if you're playing with uh, gardens. There's some victory point cards like these that'll be green that can be in here, and then you still follow the rules. So if it's two players, you only put eight of them in the stack, but if it's three or four players, you're going to put 12. There's none here, so don't worry about it too much. So each turn of the game, the player is going to do three things. They're first going to do A, action, B, buy, and C, clean up. In newer versions, they've also added D, draw, but we're just going to stick with A, B, C. So the game ends at the end of a player's turn if the province pile is empty or any three piles are empty. And remember, that counts the curses, so keep uh, those in mind when you're calculating how many piles are empty. At the end of the game, whichever player has the most points in their deck is the winner. So let's jump right in and describe actions. The first part of your turn is always action. You're allowed to do one action in your turn. Your deck doesn't start with any action cards, but as you get them, you can play them in front of you, and they stay in front of you for the whole turn. They don't go to your discard pile right away, and you do what they say. So this one is plus three cards, so you would draw three cards from your deck, and then you proceed with your turn. Some action cards actually give you more actions, like this one here gives plus two actions. So if you played that, then you could play more actions afterward, but normally you're only allowed one action per turn. So the second part of your turn is buy, and again, you're allowed one buy per turn. And the way you buy is you just lay down cards from your hand, so maybe my hand looks like this. I lay down these four treasures, and I can use them to buy a card here. The costs are in the bottom uh, corner, so I can buy anything four or less. But I am only limited to one buy, so I can't buy both of these. However, there are cards like this that actually add to your number of buys you can have in a turn. If you have multiple buys, your total amount of money has to be divided among them. What I mean by that is, if I have two buys, I can't buy a four with this and then another four. I'd have to buy a three and a one or, or two twos or anything like that. Coppers actually cost zero. Uh, silvers here, which are worth two money, cost three, and uh, gold costs six. Remember, you can buy anything. Even if you want to, you can buy curses, but it's usually not a good idea. And every time you gain a card, it goes to your face-up discard pile. And gaining includes buying, so you're not going to get it right to your hand. You're not going to get to use it, anything like that. It's discarded. So the last part of your turn is any cards that you played in front of you, whether they be treasures or actions or anything like that, uh, or anything left in your hand, you just take them and you discard them. So all those get discarded, and then you draw a hand new of five cards. Now, in this game, if at any time you need to draw a card and your deck is empty, only if you need to draw a card and your deck is empty, you take your discard pile, you shuffle it, and then you proceed to draw as necessary. So in this example, I have four cards. I needed one more to get back up to five. So in your turn, A, one action, B, one buy, three, discard everything, draw up to five. The only other thing to note is your discard pile is kept face up and nobody can look through it. They're going to be able to see the top card only, but even you yourself cannot look through your own discard pile. So the game ends when either uh, this pile is empty or any three piles are empty and players just add up the number of points in their deck. So you start with uh, three from your three estates, but at the end of the game, uh, different things can occur. So the player with the most points is the winner. Let's get going with this example playthrough. So both players have already shuffled up their deck and drawn five cards. Um, first part of your turn is the action phase. Neither player has any action, so that phase is going to be skipped for right now. But the buy, he's going to lay down three money, and he's going to use that three money to buy a treasure. So this silver goes face up in his discard pile. Now that he's done buying, because he only gets one buy, uh, the cleanup phase. So he discards everything left in his hand, all the money he played to the discard pile this time, and then draws a new hand of five cards. So then it goes over to the other player. He has the same situation, no actions available to him. And remember, even if you have them, they're totally optional. He's going to lay down four money, and he's going to buy a smithy. So the smithy immediately goes face up to his discard pile, but now the rest of it goes at the end of his turn. So he draws back up to five, and now it's this player's turn. 
with his four money, he's going to buy a smithy as well. They're really liking these smithies, so he takes it. He cleans up his turn because it's done. And now he needs to draw five cards, but uh, there's none. So he shuffles his deck, and then at, he does this because he absolutely has to. You don't just randomly shuffle your deck anytime. And then he draws up to his five cards. And for this guy's second buy, he's going to buy a village for three money. So he just does that, and he does the same thing. So both of them have their deck shuffled. Um, and they're ready to go for the next round. We're going to jump ahead to a little bit later in the game so you can see some uh, more interesting situations. Welcome back. This is likely the last turn of the game. It's this player's turn. There's only one province left. That's why it's likely to be so. One action, he gets to use a village. Village actually gives you one card and two more actions. So he still has uh, an action here. So then he's going to go market, and that as well gives him one card, one action, one buy, and one money. Um, so he still has two actions on the board. He's going to use another one, so he still has two actions. He's going to use a smithy, which doesn't give him any actions, but uh, gets three cards. So he's got one action left, and then he's got another market, so uh, that doesn't cost him anything. Then he's going to use a seller. A seller gives you an action, and you discard any number of cards from your hand and draw back that many cards. So he's going to play that. He's going to discard one, two, three, four cards. So he's going to get four draws. One, two, three four and then here's what he's been looking for another village so now he's up to uh, an additional action and he's uh, going to get some more actions there he has uh, quite a few actions at this point and he's just going to keep it rolling as long as he can before he plays these smithies in his hand okay so now he plays another smithy he still has a lot of actions left i don't think he's going to go anywhere near the min the limit so i'm not going to count him at this point but as you can see he's uh rolling pretty well and he's got lots of villages to go there's another village and here's another one so as you can see cards can work together uh very well in this game and there's definitely different strategies than just buying money this guy over here just bought money and he did fairly well doing it now he's out of cards and he needs a draw so he actually uh shuffles his discard those cards he discarded from seller mostly and uh continues going so does he have any more cards that allow him to draw? He has another seller. Uh, he figures, why not? He's going to get rid of one, two, three uh, cards because those victory cards don't really help him in his hand. So he draws three more. And then at this point, he has a whole lot of buys. Each of these is worth one money. So he's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven money. 10, 11, 14, 17, uh, 20, 21. 24, 25, 26 money. So eight of that is going to go toward this last province. So the game is definitely over after this turn. Um, but then he's got uh, quite a bit left. So he's going to buy uh, some duchies. Um, because remember, he has all these buys here. So that's 15 plus 8 is uh, 23. And then I forget how much he had but it was definitely more than 25. So he's going to get an estate as well. Now that the game is over, you take all of the cards in your hand, your discard pile, and you uh, just and your deck, and you combine them together, and you count out the number of points. Whoever has the most points is the winner. So we have everybody's points laid out. This players are here, and this players are here. I like to count them just this way because it's easiest. Uh, all the like ones. So he's got four provinces. He's got four provinces. So I'll just throw those away. And he's got three estates. And he's got three estates. So you can see clearly that this player has uh, quite a few extra points. So he is the winner. I could talk about Dominion all day, but don't worry, I'm not going to. The point is, the game is fantastic. The turns go so fast, everybody's constantly involved, and it's so easy to teach. What could be easier than A, B, C? Also, with the randomizers and just the different cards that come in the base set, the replayability is infinite, because you're going to have a different uh, set of cards every single time, and the cards interact differently. And that's kind of the fun of the game, is seeing how the different cards interact and strategically trying to get those points in your deck. Because there's the brilliant mechanic just inherent in the game that you want points in your deck to win, but you don't really want them in there because once they're in there, all they do is take up space and it makes your deck less effective. So there's that going on and just so much differences in uh, the card play and there's so many expansions for it that just make this game uh, endless amounts of fun. I can't recommend this enough to anybody that uh, enjoys card games. It's a real fun game to play with a spouse or significant other, uh, but it's also really good for competitive uh, people as well. That's Dominion. Check it out.